What's up, everyone? I'm Thomas J. Beleza, and welcome to another lesson on the right mindset. Today, we are going to focus on, as it says, uh, outlining a book series or saga, part five, outlining chapters and controlling the pace. Uh, the last thing that we did, if you were following this uh, playlist in order, is uh, we structured out chapters, which is a little different than outlining the actual chapter. Uh, the structuring of the chapters is in the outline, the main 27 uh, plot point outline. We basically said, what chapters do we want there? How many do we want for that plot point, etc.? Today, we are taking one chapter, and we are going to work on outlining that particular chapter to help control the pace as well. Before we get into it, it's always important to understand why it's important. All right. And according to my notes, it says understanding how to effectively map out your chapter is crucial for maintaining the rhythm and pace of your narrative. Uh, it's it's a little bit more than uh, dividing the content and saying, you know, what happens here? What happens there? Now, we all know pacing by uh, the layman's de definition is just the speed or rate at which information is presented to the reader. That's all it is. The more information uh, uh, presented to the reader in a, sh in a short amount of time means that the pacing is fast. The less amount of information presented to the reader is slower. And then you might be saying, Thomas, isn't all information on the page considered information? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, in fact, I have, I have several pacing videos on this. You can check those out on my channel. But I'll give a quick answer to you now uh pacing in general is is a uh, information that's vital to the movement of the narrative or the character breathing in the moment so if we stay centered in a passage or a pro and in that moment we're working through the character's progression or processing of an emotional state for example uh Thomas laid there looking up at the sky, wondering how long his final breath will take before he sees his wondrous blues turn to a dank black into the night of forever sleep. That's slow pace because we are moving through one very particular moment. We're allowing it to breathe out. We are feeling through the process of the experience, etc., etc. However, if we go back, and maybe it's the part before that, um, you know, Tom, uh, Thomas moved uh, against the cars, uh, hiding from the explosive, uh, um, the explosive uh, shots coming from uh, far off. Uh, his his nemesis trailing him with each bullet, just missing his feet. He jumps from one car to the next. Now, I, I could go on and on with that, but what's happening, the reason it's fast paced is because we're not lingering on each experience. If I said Thomas moved from car to car, right? If I took that and I said uh, Thomas stayed still against one of the cars, eyeing the distance between him and the next safe location, now we have slowed the pace. And the reason is because we are lingering on a moment. Uh, but if you speed up that moment, Thomas jumped from one car to the next car, avoiding each shot that blasted from his nemesis, uh, bullet after bullet missing his feet as he ran across the parking lot. It's fast paced because we're not lingering on those moments to process them. We are just running through those literally and literally. All right. Anyway, so the purpose of this lesson is to allow you to map out not necessarily the prose, but the beats of how your chapter is going to play out. And you'll be able to see if there are too many beats of nothing happening or too many beats of something happening, because sometimes you want to slow it down. You want to mix those kind of elements. Uh, it'll allow us to say sort of what we're looking to expect there. 
we can write notes within this. You'll see as I give a full example on the screen. You'll have a, the ability to say, you know, I kind of want to work in this moment. I want this moment to breathe. Maybe I want to divulge new information that is uh, important, not only to the character, but the narrative and the reader. All right. So pacing is about crafting a seamless flow of events, character development, and thematic exploration that keeps readers engaged and invested in your story. So this meticulous process... Uh, will ensure that every chapter serves a purpose, contributing to the overreaching plot while providing value on its own. That means one of the things we will uh, be looking at is, is this a complete chapter? So we'll we'll break that down too. Anyway. Anyway. All right. Strategies for mapping out chapters. Oh, yeah. So before we go into the physical examples i like to kind of break down a couple of things so strategies for mapping out chapters we're going to delve deep into the strategies for mapping out your chapters from deciding what pivotal moments to include to understand when a chapter is too crowded and needs to be split up that's the other advantage of this moment is because it's only plot pointed out it's bullet points i should say bullet point plotted so we'll be able to say, is this too much? Do we, what do we have? 20 plot points here. All right. How much do those plot points each have to breathe? Things like that. And through that, you'll discover how to see the crucial information throughout your chapters to build suspense and depth and the importance of letting significant moments breathe to maximum impact. If you don't know what seeding is, I call it seeding because we're planting moments, not of foreshadowing, but to earn the reveal of moment, moments foreshadowing basically uh um, hints at what's to come it's the Chekhov's gun things like that you know uh if if they look at a door and they go oh it's interesting that that door has red framing like the reason that's pointed out is foreshadowing right but there is a difference between seating and foreshadowing i have videos on seating but a quick example is Seeding are those things you don't necessarily see prominently. They don't, they're not purposefully standing out for you. Um, in fact, you know, he the way he adjusts his tie might be more seeding uh than foreshadowing. Why? Because we're seeding that he always wears ties. So if he's in every scene, he has a tie on. And then the maybe chapter 17, he has no tie on. We know something has changed. So we've seeded the, the somebody noticing that, going, oh, he's not wearing a tie. Maybe something's wrong. You've seeded that people know. In fact, if they comment on this, the tie, you're seeding the fact that he always wears it. He or she always wears a tie. Okay. Anyway. All right. So additionally, when mapping out chapters, uh, you want to take your time to map out the chapters. This is important before you get into the deep writing before the, unless that's your process. Again, this is, this is one of many processes. Uh, when I'm mapping it out, I like to sort of get critical detail down and then I discover it as well. I, when I'm writing out the zero draft, which is going to be the next lesson, I'll discover things and that'll affect how I go back and seed or add or adjust what I've already worked on. So it's, it is a continuous process of learning and growing within the novel and your story, your narrative. Okay. So when you're taking the time to map it out, uh, mapping out chapters is going to be where we take a look at the plot points within each chapter and now work on outlining the scenes themselves within the chapter. Cause if you remember in the last video, we basically just kind of, summarize what we really want to happen in that chapter within that plot point. So now we're going to take a look at that again, and then we're going to expand on that. The goal ultimately here is to not write out chapters into a zero or first draft, though you can, if that's your process. But our goal more so is that we map out the ideas within the chapters and they can be simply bullet pointed thoughts sentences paragraphs or even a summary of what you want it to be the purpose of this stage is to see how well the idea looks as a starting point within the chapter itself before you do the heavy lifting so 
And as always, I like to give three quick tips so you understand what we are doing and our goal, okay? So tip number one, quality uh, quality over quantity. I'm sure you've heard this many times, but how does that work with this lesson? When mapping out a chapter, think of what needs to go there. Right now, you're mapping out the plot. The plot. Remember, a narrative is made up of plot and story. Plot is what needs to happen. Story is sort of how it unfolds through the emotional experiences of characters and the narrative itself, right? So um, your goal with mapping out a chapter is to see what could logically fit within this chapter plot-wise. You might find that you have to create another chapter at this moment. You're working to get a general gist of what you need in that chapter and the pacing that might occur based on what you place within that chapter. What that's saying is if we're bullet pointing, if we get up to 20, 30, or even 40 bullet points, we might visually already know that we need to split this particular chapter into maybe two or three chapters. Sometimes you can split that up into, say, three or four chapters, and now there's like four or five plot points within each chapter that you created, and you get to say to yourself, you know, what plot points don't I need within these chapters? Which ones are sort of for me and not necessarily for the growth of the narrative? And now that we didn't do the heavy lifting of writing out pages and pages and pages, we can just sort of look at that and say, you know, maybe this doesn't help the plot. Now, when it comes to the story unfolding, that's when you get to kind of breathe and play with moments and take a single plot point and go, all right, let's live through this. Let's lead up to the plot point, live within the plot point, and then descend from the plot point. My point is, all right, uh, when you are working on the chapters, the amount of plot points within that chapter that you create, these bullet-pointed beats, it'll give you a chance to say to yourself, all right, I have too many or I have too little, which brings me to, again, if you break up the chapters and you break up one chapter into four chapters and each of them have three bullet point plot points in it, you might say to yourself, you know what? Now, I can actually add a couple to this third chapter and let that, I could explore that a little bit. Um, This happened with one of my, with the first epic fantasy novel that is uh, in works, all right? Uh, I realized I had to break up (laughs) a big, big moment. I had to break it up so that moment could breathe and the reader can take that in and it was allowed to have its own uh, moment that what that allowed me to is I actually took the the next beat and I realized that was a full moment but this original beginning to the chapter now had space to breathe because it's broken up through chapter which allows the pace to be controlled and cont- const- uh, con- contorted a little bit because if I had both those chapters chapters as one chapter still and I expanded that front that first chapter, would have been a monster chapter and it wouldn't allow those two major moments that were originally separated by a chapter break, a hard chapter break, um, to really exist in their own uh, vacuum of space, one might say, okay? Because in space, no one can hear you scream. Um, So that allowed me to say, oh, I can build on that first section, which can happen even while writing the story out itself. So keep that in mind with pacing. The other thing you want to keep in mind is you want to focus on getting the most out of a chapter and not about getting the most into a chapter. I'm going to repeat that. Your job is to get the most out of the chapter, not get the most into the chapter. Uh, Now, that might sound like I'm saying take out the most, but what I am saying is what you put in there has to have the gravitas, has to have the strength. And if it's only two bullet pointed plot points and it's just two quick beats and that ends up being a short chapter and maybe it's worth it maybe it did what it needs to do but again the plot is the foundation so if it's two plot points or three plot points it's not about how many plot points i could get into there it's about what can i do with that one two three four even five plot points in a way that i allow the story to unfold to make this chapter work Okay. Uh, Now, of course, uh, what happens in each chapter 
uh, is the goal is to have it stick with the narrative. Obviously, you know, you want you want it to make sense within the chapter, but you also want that chapter to make sense to the other chapters. And something that some authors forget is you want this chapter that might be in the beginning to also influence the second act and the third act. Not that they have to be solely connected, but they need to be consistent. What am I doing in this chapter that is going to influence the story that's coming after it? And how does it build on the story that came before it? Even if it's little tiny moments. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, we've talked about completed chapters, and I have plenty of videos on what makes a complete scene. It's not always about getting as many ideas as you can into the chapter. It's about allowing the chapter to breathe and push the narrative forward. Remember, outlining is about plot, not story. You want to get the foundation of what needs to happen through the character, world building, plot, and character development. All that needs to be in there. Character development is uh, showcasing who the characters are, giving the moments to shine, allowing emotional vulnerability, et cetera, et cetera. I have plenty of videos on character development, but you can plot those out. <clears throat> Thomas experiences... Uh, loss uh when he uh he loses his first uh pro nascar race that's a plot point it's not story we're not working through that moment we're not seeing how it affects the character tom we're not seeing how the nascar race plays out but as a plot point we know that he is going to lose the race okay number two seeding and repeat i love seeding you might have a large backstory for a character that you want the audience to know about. And whatever it is, you need to be able to find ways to get it into your story without a feeling overwhelming or like an exposition dump. No one likes exposition dumps. The reason I say that is because you can affect the pacing of your story when information is delivered for you and not the narrative. And what that means is sometimes as writers, and I am guilty of this, there's something really cool about the backstory and the brain thinks, oh, if the reader knows about this, it'll make them like the character like I like the character. But the reader doesn't have the bias the writer has. The writer has the bias of all the information before anything is divulged. But the secret is to get them to fall in love with the character by seeding, allowing things to come out slowly and breathe where they're not overwhelmed by information, but seeing the character live through their history, not necessarily the flashback, but the things that make them up. And even the backstory comes out through a moment of conversation, maybe a small flashback, something like that. Maybe somebody finds an old letter or an old postcard or they uh if you're writing fantasy epic fantasy uh some uh, maybe the the person has a kid and the kid is 10 or 15 or whatever and the kid comes along uh an old crate and they open it up and there's armor folded up in there and a sword just kind of nobody cares right and there's some metals and the kid is like oh father what is this and they're like oh you know it's time time before i cared you know, like, I don't like talking about that anymore. Well, we don't have to go all into it in that moment. We just seeded the first beat that this character has a history that included the armor and the sword. And now the reader is intrigued. Or maybe then they're like, maybe the reader doesn't care about swords and armor and fighting. They're reading the wrong book. But, you know, my point is you create these moments that allow the reader to see the seeding being placed over time to earn the reveal of that whole story. Now, whatever it is, uh, and I'll repeat the first part just so I can get back into the rhythm. You might have a large backstory for a character that you want the audience to know about, and whatever it is, you need to be able to find ways to get it into your story without a feeling overwhelming or like an exposition dump, because sometimes it is more about what you want and less about the narrative. So I repeated that because I want you to understand the narrative comes first. Your wants and desires of what you think should go in there might not serve the narrative. Doesn't mean it shouldn't go in there. It just means how do you get it in there to serve the narrative? Very important. There's a difference between I want them to know this because I like this versus 
this information is serving the narrative. It's moving it forward. It's doing something. It's adding plot, character, or world building. Or is it just information, right? And that's the brilliance of seeding, by the way, is that backstory information. If you do a little at a time, now you're building on it. You're building these really fun moments. And you're letting it kind of seep out. Instead of just going, here's a big expo exposition dump. Here's a huge flashback. Now you know all this information. And then we sort of like never deal with it again. However, if you break that up, like let's say you see that you wrote out this huge piece. You could break that up and go, oh, I can add this to other scenes. And not only are we reliving the knowledge of that information, but we're building on it. And we're allowing it to be basically imprint marketing into the reader's mind. Okay. A good rule of thumb is this. If the information is something you want the audience to know, as I said, then spread it out. If it's information you think would make the audience love your character or not, I would spread it out. Now, there, this is where seeding comes in. At times, you might map out a chapter with a long and complicated history of a character. During this part of the process, you can start thinking about breaking it up into smaller bite-sized pieces. The idea is that you want to take an idea and seed it back a few chapters and also seed it forward. The thing is that you might get pretty deep into your novel and forget that you've not mentioned something or alluded to it in a long while. This is where seeding can help that. You never have to be like, hey, remember Jim? You can be more subtle. Mention something about Jim or about his character, etc. It might even be something as much as, uh, what are you doing with your, uh, your beard there? Uh, what are you talking about? Um, you got a, you got a weird thing going on with your beard. It looks, it looks like what Jim did. And it's like, oh yeah, Jim always did have funny beard. Really? This looks like Jim's beard. And you're like, yeah, it's silly beards. Right now the cut is, you know, you're playing with the moment. Okay. Uh, but now readers are like, oh yeah, Jim, he always has the silly beards. Like, you know, you put it in, boom. Additionally, after each chapter that you mapped out, think of these two things. Do I foreshadow or seed anything important in this chapter in a previous chapter? And of course, what not mentioned in the preceding chapters that I need to now uh, note now? Let me repeat that because that sounds completely crazy what I just said. When you're trying to foreshadow or seed, you have to think about did I add anything into this chapter that I need to notate for future chapters? Did I add anything into this chapter that I can go back and seed into previous chapters? Okay, so that's important. Uh, and obviously, you should be doing that with all chapters. You should be looking at every chapter you map out and say, all right, I have information here. Is there anything here that I can add to future chapters to sort of like keep it moving, keep it seeding, keep it growing? Uh, is there anything that I should put in the back? Um, why is this important? Because this will allow you to continue maintaining a narrative flow with information by going back to earlier chapters and making sure little crumbs are seeded within the narrative. And that seeds uh, will be flushed out over time and reveal later on in the narrative and ultimately earning any awesome part. All right. I will add uh, uh, that you don't have to do this for everything. Things you uh, want to feel are earned need to be seeded, though. If it's something you're like, oh, this is going to be such a great moment. They're going to be like, oh, this connects right back to that thing. And you need to seed that. You, you need to work on seed. Things you want to pay off later also need to be seeded. So earning and pay off. Uh, so what is the big difference? Earning is like, if someone's able to do something or they come to the conclusion or something, or uh, let's say it's a thriller or a mystery and they, they have the revolution, the, the, the revelation of something like all that needs to be earned. So how did they earn it? Right. And that's why sometimes in movies, I uh, spoiler six cents, uh, you know, Bruce Willis is like, so what's, what's the deal? And the kid's like, oh, I see dead people. I, I talk to them all the time. And then there's these quick flashbacks. Uh, the wife didn't talk to him at the restaurant. Um, you know, uh, the door thing, the like they just keep going back to all the things they showed you. And you're like, oh, it was always there. You know, um, also throwaways do not have to be seated, but you can seed them uh, sort of like a uh, red herring. 
a throwaway might be something about an in-world game that people play. If the game doesn't have a payoff, you need to see it. Uh, if the game doesn't have a payoff, you don't really need to see it. But you can mention it. Um, in my world, I have a game called uh, Decker Dice. And uh, uh, it's not pivotal to the narrative. It's just world building. Um, so occasionally people mention Decker Dice or people are playing it in the background, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, world building might dictate that you keep bringing it up. Just as I said, like, hey, people love this game in the world, so they should be playing it. Um, all right. Do, do, do. Note to self, going back and seed ideas or break ideas up into smaller digestible ideas. For example, if the narrative needs to explain that a character has an intense backstory, it's better to break it up into smaller bite-sized pieces and finds ways to interject it into the narrative naturally by allowing it to come up through forward narrative. Yeah. Third, third. Yeah, I know kitty cat. Who's your kitty cat? I don't know if you can hear my cat or I just sound like I'm crazy. Uh, all right. So this, uh, this, uh, when to break a chapter up, this is a generic rule to use. Uh, but, uh, ultimately no more than three scenes, a chapter. So when you're looking at a chapter, okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> cat lovers out there. Who's a cat? She just wants, she wants my patents and loving. Um, all right. So, uh, again, no more than three scenes to a chapter. If a chapter is filling up with more than three scenes, you might want to rethink the chapter layout and the importance of those scenes. Another element to keep in mind with scenes within a chapter is, am I throwing off the pacing and the reader by jumping to a lot of different locations? Um, Now, as a rule, uh, this is uh, that you can jump around to other characters within a scene. If you do so, use hard chapter breaks. But a long battle scene within a chapter is considered one setting, and you might want to show multiple perspectives of the battle unfolding. Um, in these situations, think of battles as potential chapters. For example, if it's a quick battle, even with multiple perspective shifts, you might only need a chapter. But you can break battles up into the first half and the second half, or you could do the setup to the battle. You could do the first half of the battle, the second half of the battle, and maybe you do a fourth chapter that is the very ending of the battle. Uh, other ways to know... Oh, additionally... You could do the entire battle, especially if it's short, one chapter from one POV, and then redo the same chapter. Um, I'm sorry, redo the same battle from a new POV. So you could do that too. Again, it's writing, it's creative. You could do whatever you want. But when you're looking at it, if it's like a very, a very straightforward narrative chapter that isn't a battle, you might want to stay to three hard chapter breaks. If you're going to a fourth or fifth hard chapter break, the chapter might need to be broken up, but again, it also comes down to, is this a complete chapter? Am I hitting all the right points, et cetera, et cetera, you know? Uh, other ways to know if you should break up a chapter is to think of what's going on or going into the chapter itself. If you find that you are adding too much information, even in one scene with one setting, you might want to think about how you can break it up. Another element is let ideas breathe. If you have a deep philosophical moment within a chapter, you might want to let it be its own chapter, even if it's a 2,000 words uh, chapter by the end. You know, It's all up to you. It's all part of the creative process. Let moments breathe when and where they need to so your reader has time to think about what they just read. That's all I'm saying. Hmm. Before we go any further, please subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss out. All right. First step. First step. Mapping out the first three chapters. We're probably only going to map out uh, the first chapter. We'll see how it goes. I don't want to. I don't want to take up all your time. Let's see. 
Uh, oh. Oh. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Boop. Is this it? Eh, let's see. I think that's it. Yeah, this is it. Okay. All right. So, for anyone out there uh, who hasn't seen the previous video in this series, I highly recommend going back and watching the whole series if you haven't seen it at all, because uh, I go step by step. However, um, I took the first section, The Ordinary World, which is three plot points, The Ordinary World Before the Disruption, The Inciting Incident, and Plot Point 3. Uh, which is the protagonist reacts to the inciting incident. And as you can see, I basically said, I'm going to have two chapters for plot one, one chapter for plot two, and one chapter for plot cuatro. Okay. So in doing so, I only kind of summarized it. And, uh, you know, we watched Jack walk the tail end of the city. So I'm going to copy and paste this because we're only doing the one chapter. We're going to move on to here. Oh, chapter one. Welcome to Chicago, 1946. All right. And as always, let's get the information down on the page. Hey. Welcome to Chicago. All right. Let's just make this nice here. Hey, Jack Beanstalk. Hey. Okay. All right. Okay. We watched Jack work the tail end of a case. Through that case, we see how terrible and grim the streets are. All right. So, a couple things we need to do is. Do, 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 do. We need to see how grim the streets are. So, uh, we'll have to think of some things for that. Uh, da, da, da. The streets uh, of the city are... All right, the other thing is uh, Jack trails three people heading down the street from outside a nightclub. Oh, okay. So, I'm going to bring this down here, and we're going to... Eh. Okay... What else is he going to do? He's going to follow them to a diner and watch them eat. From there, two of the people can get a cab. Jack follows that person to the park. And while at the park, the man ends up meeting other people. There is an exchange of something. He almost gets caught. And then this actually does need to go back up top. Why? Because this is more of uh, an element of world building that I need to make sure is there. So if I was to look at this, uh, these would be, boop, whoop. let's do this. Okay. All right. Now, why did I number these and why did I leave this a bullet point? Because these are, the seven main beats in the chapter that we need. Or more importantly, the quote-unquote scenes. Not the hard chapter break scenes, but just the movement of the chapter, okay? Now, right off the bat, I could kind of tell this is going to be a full chapter because we set it up, right? Uh, we create some action, so this is the middle of it. Uh... He almost gets caught. He almost gets caught. This is how I'm going to end it, but there's a conflict in there. Um, follows. Okay, so this is this is sort of like, I would say this is the middle. And there's an exchange or something. He's like, oh, okay. And he takes photos. So that's, that's what needs to happen, right? And then uh, he almost gets caught, but the man ends up leaving. Etc. Etc. All right. So now we have to say to ourselves, self, what would these moments look like? 
how would we create these moments and what makes them a plot of this chapter, right? So let's do it. Let's really get into it. Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? Uh, do you want to see my face? Hey, 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 hey. All right. So Jack trails three men heading down the streets from a nightclub. All right. So I'd like to... Uh, we don't actually have to start um, with Jack heading up to the nightclub. But we can have a start with Jack throwing down a cigarette. Right? Let's say he's a smoker. Right? Um, okay. Uh, three people leave the nightclub okay so again this is the plot point right jack trails three people heading down the street from outside a nightclub now i need to build that moment all right this would be the plot of that moment okay um and obviously story would be how it unfolds so it'd be the pros and like the emotional truth and like what's going on and stuff so i'm setting up the scene so Every scene needs to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. So the beginning is uh, start with Jack throwing down a cigarette. Uh, three people are leaving the nightclub. And then, because it's noir, uh, talks about the club uh, and his personal opinion on who he's following. But more important, without giving away who they really are because remember this is just uh according according to the thing it's just it's just a quick tail end of a case right um if we go back to this yeah right yeah we watch uh, Jack work the tail end through the case. I think I need that. Boop, boop. Why was that not there? Oh, here it is. Here it is. It is there. I want this. Pew. All right. So let's do this. Uh, okay. Continue. Um, trails and he follows them to a diner. All right. So this this is good for now. This is for me. This is good. This sets this up. We don't have to go too deep into it because this is just the, the narrative plot. So he follows them to a diner and watches them eat. So I don't want to have him following them to the diner because we have him following them out of the nightclub. What we can do is <clears throat> uh, Jack watches them through the diner diner window I'm smoking another cigarette i can't spell every great writer has a great editor follows them to a diner and watches them eat okay uh mention how long it's uh They've been in the diner or show how long they've been in the diner uh, by the amount of people in the place at the beginning versus the end of the moment when people get up to leave. All right. Okay, what I can do now, because I know this beat is coming up, is uh, or show how long they've been there by the amount of people in the place. Okay, so I can take that out, and I know that in here, it's been a while. Show that the diner is emptier. Okay. Show. All right, it's been a while. Boop. 
show that the tent is emptier. All right. Another moment here is uh, have Jack talk about how crappy this case is. All right. Because again, we want to, uh, he's working a tail end, right? Uh, something about how these pay the bills. But chip away at the, the motivation of it. Chip away at the motivation. All right, so uh, two of the people get into a cab, and the third stays behind. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the man pays the bill in the diner after finishing his cup of coffee. Yeah. All right. Uh, cup. Oh, cup of coffee. I got it. I got it. All right. So then. Uh, we got, we got to make sure the man leaves, uh, looks both ways and then heads off. Okay. Which means we follow him to the park where is this guy going? Have Jack think about where this where this guy this guy is going think about think about have jack thinking oh have jack thinking about where this guy what have jack thought about no <laughs> okay jack follows that person to the park have jack thinking about where this guy is going uh, maybe have Jack mention that he hates this park, uh, seeding a past relationship, maybe. All right. So those are little, th again, now when we talk about plotting out and outlining, see, I'm adding little moments. These are character development moments. The cigarettes, he's been, he's clearly a chain smoker. So we have multiple cigarette moments. Uh, we're already setting up the noir style, so I make sure that he's thinking about certain things. In this case, he always he has an opinion, so he's ha he has these heavy opinions. Where those opinions go, I haven't really thought about yet, right? So I'm just saying that he has personal opinion on who he's following without giving away who they are. Uh, he talks about how crappy this case is, right? So we're getting a sense of who he is, all right? Uh, so that's important. I always like to do this with notes to myself. These are notes to myself. Uh, well, at the park, the man ends up meeting other people. Oh, three more people show up uh, carrying, oh, uh, carrying something. Oh, what that something is, we don't know. Well, let's go back to this. Uh, he's recording, tells the people to send the money. Uh, we learn. Oh, uh, okay. All right. All right. So we don't, did I mention what that is? I think it ends up being a, uh, it might connect back to something else, but, uh, there are people showing up carrying something. Uh, they, uh, a briefcase. It's got a briefcase, bro. All right. Now, as you can see, the first, the first one has three, uh, three things that kind of make it up. The second one has three things, right? Uh, the third thing has three things. But I'm getting a little quicker here, right? So we're just getting right to the the meat of these beats. Okay. The three more people show up carrying a briefcase. Uh, they talk a bit. Uh, the one guy is uh, confident, while the other three are less so. Okay. Uh, maybe they are nervous 
at least one of them is looking around. Nervous. Okay. There's an exchange of something, and Jack takes photos. Now, that's kind of, that that does itself. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn that into this. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> Da, da, da. Boom. There we go. It becomes a part of this. So he sees them doing that. And by the way, all outlining and all uh, creative elements, you're allowed to change things up. Like just because I made it six points doesn't mean I can't uh, adjust how it's represented within the work of it. Okay. So how does he almost get caught? Uh, one of the men uh, here, the clickety clack, click of the camera and they go over and investigate but they are searching in the wrong area one of the men hears uh they head off jack all right they had uh, oh, the men, the men all head off. All right. And then we want Jack to rest and relax in a bush or wherever, wherever he is hiding. Um, have him say something that uh, describes his feelings on the situ situation uh, that ends the chapter. Okay, boom. There we go. We got six moments, right? That was actually pretty uh, pretty smooth. Pretty smooth here. Yeah. Pretty smooth. Smooth here. Yeah. Smooth. All right. So it starts off with Jack Trails People. We get that. How does that look? We, we work that out. Uh, and then he follows them to a diner and watches them. Well, I, I didn't, again, I didn't want to, have him continue to follow so we just this would probably be a hard chapter break uh honestly so i might say i might do this hard chapter break okay hard chapter break yeah can't go wrong with a hard chapter break okay jack watches them through the diner window smoking some cigarettes mentions how long they've been there got that got that from there two of them uh, so this I would actually make a soft chapter break. What's the difference, everyone? A hard chapter break is is a direct switch uh, in an extended amount of time uh, have changing. Um, more importantly, if the location changes drastically, you would do a hard chapter break. Uh, and if the POV changes, you would do a hard chapter break, among other things. Soft chapter breaks are sort of through the same narrative beat, but maybe you're cutting time. Like, you know, we don't need to sit there with them for a half hour. You know, you don't have to do that. You could just be like, you know, <clears throat> boom, let's just go a half hour. Um, if it's a character walking through a house, right, you could do soft chapter breaks if you're like, all right, they enter the house, they go through one room or another room, and then someone turns around and goes, all right, check the other rooms, let me know if it's okay. Then you do a soft chapter break, and they all meet up in, a, in one of the rooms in the house, and they go, no, everything seems clean or clear. Like, that's an example of a soft chapter break. All right, anyway, from here, the two men get it out. We're still there. The guy pays his coffee. Oh, Jack follows him to the park. Now, this is the thing. I could do a hard chapter break and just have them at the park, right? But I'm going to do a soft chapter break only because he's following them right from the diner, right? So the man leaves, the, uh, looks both way, and heads off. Jack follows that person to the park, all right? Now, I don't feel like any of these need to be soft chapter breaks because it's now all taking place in the park. However... Because that is so, what we could do, we could do the hard, here we go. This is the justification, hard chapter break. So the man leaves and walks off and then heads off and Jack follows him. This is what I would do. This is what I would do. 
thinking about where is this guy going? Maybe. All right. I'm going to go back to my original thought. I think that makes more sense. Okay. But now we could do a hard, a hard chapter break. Uh, and we change this at the park. The man ends up meeting. So mentioned something that he hates this park. So I'm going to add a thing. So maybe this is a, uh, he stops at the uh, main main uh, sign for the park. Okay. Now, by the way, as you can see, like this, these two are indicating what how this beat plays out. Jack follows the person to the park. So, how does that play out? Have Jack thinking about where this guy is going, uh, since he doesn't know. Okay, and then maybe Jack mentions that he hates this park, right? Sending a pa uh, seeding a past relationship or what have you. How does that beat play out? Well, then I do an indent, and I he stops at the main gate for the park. This is where he mentions something about a past relationship, or suggests something about a past relationship okay so now we know how that beat kind of plays out then i do the hard chapter break saying that all right he's he's jumping from the intro the the entrance of the park to being settled into the park and that's why i did a hard chapter break so if we go back and look real quick we have the opening then we have one hard chapter break these soft breaks uh don't count at switching Okay, because they're within that that beat, and then we have a second hard chapter break. So, in my opinion, that would be three scenes, right? So we have the opening scene, and then we have this scene, which is the longer of the scenes, okay? And then, uh, and then we have this. This is a scene, so that's three scenes. There we go. All right, uh, three men, people show up. Now, if I wanted to, I could start getting into it a little bit more. Three three people show up carrying briefcases um one of the three men uh is dressed in really nice oh in a nice suit while the other two uh seem seasoned most likely security all right or because they are nervous uh security uh with no experience and maybe that's why and that's why their suits look seasoned because they are not good at their job yet and have uh, not purchased new suits, etc. All right, so I'm just giving backstory to my reasoning. That's for me as a writer to understand, like, why did I make that choice and how do I, you know, uh, justify it, right? Because if somebody says, what well, can you tell me the history of blank, blank, blank in your world and you don't have an answer for it, you know, Maybe it shouldn't be in there, or you should just give it a little bit of time. Only because the more you understand something, the more you can use it, the more you can play with it, the more characters can play with it. You know, um, <clears throat> like Hag Hagnets or or Hag Hagnet. Uh, the Hagnet uh, animal in my world is sort of like a, a squirrel, but it's slightly larger. It's carnivorous. Uh, it's a burrow creature that actually burrows into the carcasses of dead animals, and it's a scavenger kind of eater, sort of like a squirrel. Uh, however, they are large enough where they're they're a great supply for if you're going on trips uh, for meat because they keep well. Uh, and but there's <clears throat> like I need to know what their lifestyle are, what their purpose is, what what their connection to the world is. So I have people talk about them randomly. You know, one one says, "Ugh, you know, this thing stinks," and then another character's like, "The more it stinks, the healthier the meat is, because it means that they they recently had a big meal before they died." And you're like, "Oh, okay, so that's something you know, right?" Um, anyway, there is an exchange of something, and uh, Jack. 
All right. So there you go. Very, uh, this was pretty quick, right? I just kind of like put together some ideas. Uh, and this all came from the original thought and segment that I had. All right. So what's next? What's next? Well, according to this, um, we add and subtract. All right. So we can kind of go through it if we really want. Uh, I already did the add and subtract technically. Uh, I went back and reread it and we added, uh, uh, we added the, what's a hard chapter break, a soft chapter break. Uh, we added the secondary beats to moments because they just came to me. Uh, we added this little moment here. All right. Seeding information. So, I, all right. The, I kind of do all these things at the same time. All right. And seeding would be uh, the cigarette thing. I was seeding cigarettes. I was seeding the noir style, the, the, the texture of the storytelling. Um, I was seeding, uh, his personality, uh, things like that. Okay. We're seeding, we're seeding a potential past relationship, which, you know, we'll work on that. And, um, this, this is also technically seeding too. Like, uh, the, the fact that the, the suits are going to be a certain way, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It kind of adds to it. So like, you know, later on when, you know, they're terrible at their job it makes sense all right so there you go uh moving on things things that you should understand before we finish uh you know you want to practice uh outside of writing we, we talk about this often okay so crafting your chapter blueprints you know you, you don't have to practice these techniques only when you're writing so if you're working on a story that's fine however you want to practice when you're not working on your story so you can have the tools while working on your story. So it's okay to kind of like practice ideas on the side and just things that you might throw out and things that might end up being something. But the point is, how do we work on it? So, you know, your task is to take a segment of your story, your series or a saga uh, and outline the beginning of the process, etc. And then when you get to your chapters, you might want to just select certain segments and just say how far can i go let me let's let's say my story isn't really the story i'm writing where can i take this how can i brainstorm this what can i do and you just practice what we did today which is you map out you, you map out the basic outline of the chapter you take your summary from the last step and you break it up into moments like we did six moments okay well, originally it was seven but i ended up turning it into six okay and you just map out sort of how you want those to play out each of those in this case six beats and then you go back through it and you're going to add and subtract what you like do you like this change that uh, are these soft chapter breaks or these hard chapter breaks is it just one fluid narrative that can happen too a chapter does not have to have soft and hard chapter breaks uh i feel comfortable looking at that chapter and saying it is a complete chapter it has a beginning a middle and end okay and then you want to see, you want to talk about your seeding. If the seeding is necessary, uh, if there's stuff that you're missing, stuff that you want to put in, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, okay. Final thoughts. As we bring this lesson to a close, it's essential to pause and appreciate the journey you've embarked on so far. Now, Mapping out chapters and controlling the pace is more than just a step in the process of outlining a book, series, or saga. It's a craft in itself. Uh, it's a delicate balance of art and precision that breathes life into the skeleton of your narrative. This stage of outlining is where your story begins to take on a life of its own, transforming from a series of plot points into a living, breathing narrative that flows with purpose and intent. Now, each chapter you outline in a step deeper, uh, uh, or I should I should say, let me repeat, each chapter that you outline is going to be a step deeper into the world you've created, a promise to your future readers of the adventures that await them. You want to remember that chapters you create are the vessels of your story's soul, carrying your reader through the highs and lows, the twists and turns, the heartaches, and the triumphs. Your meticulous uh, attention to pacing, your thoughtful placement of information, and your sensitive 
uh, sensitivity to the rhythm of your narrative are what will make your series or saga not just readable, but unforgettable. Uh, as you continue to refine your chapter outlines, you, you have to keep in mind that this is not just about plotting a course. Who oh, no. It's about setting the stage for the magic of storytelling and unfolding said story. It's about creating spaces where your characters can grow, your themes can resonate, and your world can expand in the imaginations of your readers. So, as we conclude today, carry forward the insight and strategies we explored, but also hold on to the understanding that your story is a living entity, evolving with every chapter you outline. Embrace the fluidity of this process, the ebb and flow of creativity, and let your narrative unfold in a way that is true to its essence and true to your vision as a storyteller. All right, next in the story, uh, the story, the series, is uh, we're going to be writing the zero draft. I'm going to show you me writing the zero draft. I'm going to show you the process. I'm gonna, you're going to see it unfold. You're going to see it unfold. What we mapped out today, you're going to see in the next video, me taking that and zero draft and the hell out of it. Question. How do you tackle the challenge of pacing in your chapters? Do you prefer to plan every detail beforehand, or do you let the story unfold organically and adjust the pacing as you write? Share your approach and tips that you found helpful in the comments below. Uh, if you have not done so already and you like what you're seeing, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. A uh, quick reminder, I will be going back to doing Saturday live videos where I uh, do outlining exercises for myself. Because remember, we don't practice only when we write. We practice in general. So you'll see how I practice through things. Maybe uh, you'll get something out of However, every live session is there to answer your questions. So if you have questions on what I am working on at that time or in general, feel free to ask. Get involved. It's an interactive live session. All right, I guess that's it, you know. Whew. As always, what do we say here? Keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye.